Welcome to Handmade Happenings. I'm Melissa, and today is my second attempt at making a bodice block or sloper pattern. And you heard me right, second attempt. This is not the second part of a video. You didn't miss a part. I'll get to what happened with the first attempt in a minute. But first, you might be asking, why am I making a bodice block or what is it? And again, you might not, especially if you've already clicked on this video. But if you don't know, a bodice block or sloper pattern is tailor-made to a certain set of measurements. My understanding is in the fashion industry, it would be like your standard sets for sizes. Or in my case, you can take your own measurements and draft it to your size so that it fits you perfectly. That's what I'm going for here. And then once you have that block pattern that fits you very well, you can adjust it according to the design of your pattern or whatever. In the past, I've used a pattern from the book So Many Dresses, So Little Time. And I kind of have modified a couple of the different patterns, sizes to try and fit so that it fit well in both the waist and the bust. But what happened was somehow in all of those changes, I messed up something in the shoulders. And so the bodice would fit very well as long as I didn't add sleeves which is kind of limiting on the designs and styles and sleeveless dresses are great during the summer, but not so great when it gets colder. So I did a lot of modifications so that I could add sleeves, but I've found that I just don't like the feel of it now. So I'm trying to start from scratch with measurements and draft it myself. As I said earlier, this is attempt number two, and I'm going to insert clips here that will show you exactly how attempt number one went and what went wrong. Uh, this tutorial actually calls for like 20 measurements, and I'm going to say it now. If this doesn't work, it's probably not the fault of the tutorial, and entirely because my mom and I were probably not nearly as precise with our measurements as we should have been. So I finished the front bodice and right away, if this shows up on here, you can see the issue. There's probably an issue because this is the arm hole curve and it's way too shallow like and funky shaped. So very obviously that did not turn out quite right. I still don't think, as I already said, that it was anything to do with the tutorial. I'm pretty sure it had everything to do with the measurements. But here's the thing. That tutorial called for more than 20 measurements, really, because it was 20 measurements, but some of them you had to have the front and the back. So that's a lot of measurements. I really didn't want to take them again. I did try. My mom and I did try to take them again, but I found that we were getting a different number for the same measurement every time. And I just wasn't sure what measurement was right. I, I assume it had to do with how I was standing. But I have shifted gears to a tutorial on a blog, which calls for significantly less measuring or measurements. And being a blog tutorial instead of a video tutorial, I think I can follow easier just because if I need to read a step five times, it's just, it's right there. I can just read it. Whereas with a video, if I have to watch it five times, I'm constantly having to go back and watch it and then play it back again. And sometimes that means watching pieces that you didn't need necessarily to watch five times because you're trying to get to a certain point. <laughs> So I finished the front bodice 
and it's already looking a lot better than it was in the last one. There was only one measurement that kind of threw me because I took it and it was like, take this measurement, divide it by four, draw a line, and mark it. And I did. And it was along the same line that was a, a line that was already drawn. So it was like, mark it at this point. And somehow my line for the second measurement was longer than the first measurement. And I don't think that's supposed to be the case because in the pictures, it's like, if there's already an existing line, the second line was like shorter. But for me, my second line was longer. So I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. A few of these numbers were a little difficult because it was like, take this number and divide it by four. And you're looking at a number that's like five and seven eighths. And when you start dividing fractions, especially in more than half, it does get a little messy. So I don't know if that was it. I'm, I might go back and check it. So I did go back and look at that again, and it turns out what happened was I used a back measurement when I was supposed to use the front measurement, and that's why the line was too long. So I'm working on the back bodice, and as usual, I don't think this is showing up very well on camera, but there's supposed to be, or there's a possibility of a difference in the width between the back shoulder and the front shoulder. And the tutorial says you might need a small dart. Well, somehow my difference has ended up being a good three inches, which has made for a very wide dart that's not lining up. I'm not sure why, so... I think I'm going to restart. I think I know maybe what happened. But I'm going to restart and see if maybe I just missed something in the instructions. So there were two problems here. Uh, the first was another case of improper measuring. And the second was a case of instructions that you're working in like down to an eighth of an inch and then you have to divide it by four or five or you know whatever number and when you're working with that much of a division plus eighth of an inches you end up with funny numbers like one and one tenth of an inch and it it's just kind of very hard to then kind of judge so where exactly should that be and you end up having to almost guess and so that was the two reasons that this was off The back is done along with the front. Here they are side by side. Uh, next I'm going to add the seam allowance and then make a mock-up and see how it turned out.
all done and sewn up. Uh, I only have pins in the top and the bottom of the back because I can't reach and I don't have a zip on hand and so that'll have to wait, but I assume it fits in the back. A few fit issues that I noticed right away without that is that the side seams in the back are longer than the front. I'm not sure what caused that. Uh, another problem is, is that the entire bodice does not sit. It's too short. And it doesn't even hit the waist. And this was supposed to have, I already added the seam allowance, supposedly. And it's still not at the waist. So I'm going to have to lengthen that. The darts, I think, need to be moved over towards the um, side seams a bit. They they seem too close to the center. And I'm not sure about the shoulders. They, they seem like a good fit. Again, this is supposed to already have seam allowance in. So hopefully they will fit with sleeves. Actually, they seem a little tight right now, but again, that's the seam allowance, I assume, for the sleeves that is causing that. Same for the neckline. The seam allowance is already added in, which makes it very tight. I did run a stitch 5 eighths of an inch around this, which is where the seam, which is how much seam allowance I added, so like it would fold down like this, which would be much looser. So I don't tend to like very tight necklines anyway. Um, the pattern, uh, or the tutorial already incorporated wearing ease into it, so I think between that and the fact that I did not like pull the tape measure really tight makes it where it is loose enough that I would feel comfortable wearing this. I wouldn't ha have to add more ease to make a pattern or to make a dress straight from this, which is fine. I don't need anything so tight that it's like a second skin. Uh, as the tutorial calls it. So that's fine. I guess I'll be making a few adjustments to the waist and such and try again. To make the changes to my pattern, I started by making a copy of the one I had onto a, another sheet of paper. In order to do this, because the pattern is way too big for a tracing pad, or like a light pad, I just placed the paper onto a carpeted floor, followed by the pattern, and used a pen just to put dots through the pattern and onto the paper underneath. Now this was mainly to transfer the location of the dart for the front. After that was done, I moved everything back to my cutting table, and I started by lengthening the bottom and then move the dart over by one inch and then continued from there just to re-angle everything using both the pattern as well as the dots on the paper underneath to shift everything to where it needed to be. Well this is a definite improvement. Uh, it hangs below my waist heel which is good because uh, I've already added in the seam allowance. Obviously, again, neck is tight because I did not trim off the seam allowance here. I actually got pinned in the back this time so I could see how it fits. And I like the fit. It, um, my only concern now is the shoulders because it doesn't look like they're as wide as they need to be for sleeves to work, so that's my next thing before I decide that it's completely done is to see if it will actually fit with sleeves. All right, so we have sleeves and they do seem to fit. These were just um, pre-done sleeves that I have from another pattern. And when I need to know if something fits in the sleeves, I always just kind of do this. And if it doesn't feel like it's pressing against my back, then we're good. So I guess I can actually say that this does fit and that I'm finished. So my biggest takeaway from this project is to make sure you have your measurements right or as accurate as you can get them at least because even just a little off seems to kind of skew everything. 
I think the biggest difference between the two tutorials, because my measurements were off on both, is that one, the method seemed to compress it, like, because it was too, sh my total length of the pattern was too short, compressed everything at the top, which is why the strap was way too short and it just looked very funky. The second one evidently must have worked from the top down. So when you ran out of room, it was at the bottom, which meant that when it was too short, it was just a matter of lengthening at the bottom, which is a lot easier to do because that's mostly straight as opposed to trying to lengthen at the top where the neckline and the arm side are. I will probably draft a sleeve at some point in time because the ones that I have just don't fit. Like if I follow the size for the arm side that I, oh, if I follow the sleeve size for most of the bodices that I've used or have modified, it ends up too tight. Like I'm not sure what it's considered, but like between elbow and shoulder, that area ends up just way too tight. So I probably need to draft one of those eventually. It's not going to be today, obviously. Um, but overall, I am glad that I did this and I would encourage anybody who's been hesitant that it is not necessarily anyway, as hard as it sounds. There are tutorials out there that really simplify it. I would say start with a simpler one to kind of get your feet wet. And then maybe if you really enjoyed it, try a harder one. Thank you so much for watching. I will leave a link to the tutorial that I followed in the description. And if you've ever made a bodice sloper yourself, please leave a comment and tell me how it went and what tutorial you used.